Last week felt like we were getting punked with those bad CEO moments, from Miller Knoll CEO's comments about Pity City to Clearlink CEO's comments, seemingly praising an employee for giving up their family dog as a sacrifice so they could return to the office. So what's going on? In this video, I'll talk about why I think some of these CEOs have these missteps and steps that all leaders can take to avoid becoming a headline. Now, when I talk about leadership, some of what I say is the exact same thing I say to my kids, that just like the line from Frozen, people do bad things because they're mad or scared or stressed. I won't sing it this time. But that logic really applies to adults as well, and especially adults at work, even up to the top levels of the corporate ladder. Because when you are a CEO or a company leader, undoubtedly you have pressure and you are going to feel that stress. Hopefully you appreciate the weight of having employees' livelihoods at stake and that impact to their families. That's a pressure. You also likely have pressure from your board of directors, your investors, likely individuals that have deep business experience that are looking to you to execute every move perfectly. And so when you're in those positions of stress, especially when you have economies that seem unpredictable, then that kind of stress can come out in emotions that are bad or certainly look bad to those watching with the open eye on the Zoom. Now, a lot of times you are seeing these comments on Zoom chats or Zoom talks with employees, and it's always a good reminder that those Zoom calls frequently are recorded. And so something that you're saying may come out whether you like it or not. And so being really mindful of what to say. But in these Zoom calls, talk, take the Miller Knoll CEO, for example. She started out talking about having kindness and then talked about how employees were asking about their bonuses. And her message to them is, don't worry about your bonus, worry about hitting that revenue target. In the Pity City comment was that she'd received advice from a leader saying, you can go to Pity City, but you can't stay there. Now let's unpack that a little bit because there's absolutely true messages in what she's saying which is if you're in an environment and you're gonna pay bonuses, that oftentimes a bonus will have factors of a company's performance and an individual's performance. But if the revenue isn't there on the company side, it can be really hard to make the math work to pay out those bonuses. And also the idea of the pity city is for employees, it's not a healthy mindset to be wallowing and coming to work every day stressed. But the way she delivered that really was deriding employees, like criticizing them and coming at them. Basically, don't worry about yourselves. And it's that level of empathy that's so important. And in the back end of the video, I'll talk about ways that you can truly have that empathy as a leader. Again, at best, not to appear as a headline, but also to truly motivate your employees, who you're going to need to hit those revenue targets and be a place that they actually want to come to work. But so where I see missteps sometimes are where CEOs may have talking points. But then in those talking points, they go off script a little bit. That's what certainly seemed to happen in the Miller Knowles CEO's case. But in other situations as well, such as the Clearlink, talking about this employee, then that they gave up their family dog as a sacrifice to return to the office. And again, in that talk, the CEO had common threads that certainly were worth talking about that they said that 30 employees or so hadn't opened their laptops in a month. Now that seemed pretty shocking to me. And it also seemed like an issue that should be managed by the managers. And so talking about that certainly suggests, rather than just being negative about those employees, suggests that there's some real challenges in management that that organization needs to tackle. But then talking about returning to the office to look over employees is a misstep that a lot of employees take with kind of an eye roll, that we're returning to the office because that's the only way to gauge productivity. And I say that because CEOs are talking to that and using it as a talking point. And as they go off script, they're often really hammering that point. But CEOs are rarely the night watchwoman or watchman roaming around the office. Oftentimes they're behind glass doors and rarely come out and have the presence with employees. So the idea of managing and monitoring productivity doesn't always ring true with return to the offices. And employees hear that without more justification, and it ends up being a message that's not heard by those employees. They don't believe it. So when CEOs are talking in some of these moments, I do think it's really important to have not just talking points, but think about the ways that you might go off script. And having a reminder, again, that this may be recorded. And so if your motivation is to avoid being a headline, then there's ways to do that. But the other approaches that all leaders can take, my number one, is to have other people look at your communications. On Administrative Professionals Day, which is today when this is being released, 
I think that frequently leaders aren't using their administrative support as strategically as they could. They may use it for travel, they may use it for notes dictating, things like that. But oftentimes, those administrative assistants have such knowledge of the organization, historical knowledge, and a read on what's going on. They see so many communications. So leaders, when they have that administrative support, can really use that type of support better and use those individuals by asking them, will you read this? How do you think this will read to employees? That's one of the top tips that I give to leaders, is to use your administrative assistant really as a thought partner. But not just ask them what they're saying, but be prepared that they may give you feedback you hadn't thought about. I'm fairly certain that if the ClearLink CEO had an administrative assistant that was empowered, and they gave a piece of paper talking about a talking point of giving up the family dog, that hopefully that administrative assistant would have looked and realized and said, I don't know how that's going to be received, because really quickly it turned into a headline. And so for a leader to be able to have that conversation with your administrative assistant to say, I want you to read things, I want to listen to it, and please tell me how you think are going to be received. That's the type of feedback that could be a huge step for any leader. Sometimes you might not have that kind of support. And so thinking about others, if you do have a colleague or anyone on your team, again, it can be someone junior to you, a direct report, but asking them to look over things and asking that individual truly, what do you think? Always reading what you're writing or the talking points you're putting out of thinking how they're going to be perceived by the 99% of employees or public who may be watching or reading what you're saying in knowing that they don't have exactly the same life experience than you do. Because frequently those CEOs, what I see, tend to be out of touch. You don't understand the day-to-day -day struggles that employees are living with. The employees that every day may be worried that they're going to be uh, have suffering a job loss really unceremoniously, like they've seen so many online and their family and close friends. So they're worried about their jobs. They're worried about their bonus. They're worried about their salaries. Because it's true that costs seem to be rising. Go to the gas station. Go to the grocery store. Often leaders at top levels have other individuals taking care of those things for them, or they're really out of touch with the day-to-day -day experience of individuals from groceries to gas to mounting childcare costs to difficulty of getting childcare. All of those things are struggles that deeply impact the lives of employees on their team. And so by having individuals that you can talk to to get that perspective, if that's the way that you can do it as a leader, is powerful. So in addition to having someone read your communications, whether that's an administrative assistant support or whether that's somebody else, Taking another step back and having a real appreciation for those employees on your team, those people that are having a different life experience than you, but one that often is shared by the rest of your team, those kind of struggles. And so that's why I do think having, whether it's listening sessions or a word, a phrase that, that can resonate more with employees, but just taking time to talk to employees and understanding how they're doing, to get that real picture. Because when you're at a certain level and you have income and you're having you know, certainly much different life than many of your employees, you may not understand what their life is like and also what value they're bringing to the table. And so having questions that you can ask to employees of you know, day to day, what are challenges that, that you're bringing to work that you wish that I had a better appreciation of? That's a question you can ask. Or asking things like, what are something you'd like to see changed at work? And telling people, you know, we won't be able to implement every idea, but I want to hear them. That requires a lot of trust. And so I'm pretty certain if the ClearLink CEO or Miller Knoll CEO tried to immediately the next day have listening sessions, people are rarely going to want to give that feedback because they may be still pretty shocked about how those calls went. And so building those relationships of trust can take time. But listening to them and acting on the feedback that you hear and telling employees because a lot of employees would love to see a CEO that said, I took time and met with different employees to understand their challenges, and this is how we're implementing them. Rarely are leaders taking time to listen to employees. Rarely are leaders taking time to act on what they're hearing. And third, rarely are leaders then telling employees what they're doing. And these are all pieces of information that people deeply want to hear. So I'm hoping this week has a few less headlines about different CEOs' actions. But this video is about, again, why I think some of these CEOs do it. I think it is often from a position of stress and not understanding the day-to-day -day lives. And, but reacting emotionally like that is a step that leaders can prevent by really thinking mindfully and thoughtfully about communications they're making and taking time to actively learn about what that experience is like for their employees. These are steps that take time and are required to build trust. 
But at the end of the day, these are ones that can create work environments where good employees want to come, stay, and be engaged at work. So not only are those employers employees happier, but also the investors and board of directors are seeing organizations that perform.